Okay, let's now use our tool. We edit the lower and we're going to use our uh, LogoPress tool called Sketches Merging where we take something that would be very difficult to torch cut like that. Impossible really. And we just blow a hole in there that we can drill. Now we'll put some pad retainers in. We've got both reverse style and regular with flats, without flats, Amcor, Danley Lamina, lots of different selections for just about everything. Just about all standard components, that is. And we'll set the travel. And we'll automatic pattern. Validate that. It remembers the last settings you had for patterning. So the next time we put something in, it's going to remember four. It's going to remember the X spacing, the Y spacing. And let's switch to generic inch after we pick our plates here. And switch to three eighths. and validate automatic pattern and as I says, said it remembers the last numbers so we just change them there we go you can see it editing the plates Put some dowel pins in and it asks us first for the press fit side and then the focus jumps to the slip fit side and we hit OK. Automatic pattern remembers the last numbers so we'll switch it after finishes here to 2. Change the X dimension. Bump it up a little bit more and OK. And there we'll have our doubles. And add nitrogen cylinders. Again, lots of different brands many many models within the various brands let's use a dadco base face length plate other plates cross through and then we'll preview it from the side and we're also going to put the clamping screws in as you can see down here and make this flush. We won't counter bore into the stripper. And we'll just manually pop some points into there. And look, there's a blue arrow that appears. And that blue arrow shows you where the center of the force is. And we validate that, and you can see on the top of the screen, there's some black numbers getting sketched in there. That's the mounting holes for the the screws, the socketed cap screws that hold the cylinders in. Some people just drop them in there, and that's fine too. That's why we have the option to uncheck that. and some more screws I really like this 
feature. So we've got that small punch that we've got the shoulder on in the back there. And we hit OK, and then we automatic pattern. How cool is that? Oh, of course it's not cool. But when we change it to one point, it's cool. And then we validate. So we're in SOLIDWORKS sketch mode, and then we can change it to whatever we like. But it found the exact center between those two places. And there's our screw holding that small punch in. Let's show just the lower. Uh, wait a minute. I forgot I wanted to mount these uh, cylindrical punches yet. So we do that with standard components. Come over here to uh, cylindrical or conical head punch. Select the ejector type punch. And the punch to mount is this one. Head plate. The focus jumps to die plate. So we select there. And other plates cross through as the die shoe down here. So that gets a hole automatically. We got, again, lots and lots of different punches. We'll use the date and versatile for now. Those settings are fine. In the stripper plate, we've got a counter drilled hole that we need to we always default to the same size as the pierce punch because we don't know. You might want to guide it by 5 tenths or something. Okay, and let's now add a die button. And you can see that we leave space for a grinding collar, but in this case we're not going to use a grinding collar or a shim. We're going to go with a full length die button. And then we, we automatically put a point in the first hole. If there are multiple punches in the same part, you can see one of these is in the first part, one's in the second. There we go. Um, when they're both in the same part, then we'll automatically find all of them if they're in multiple stations. We need to manually place those points. And there we've got our pierce punches. And now that one right there needs to be hidden yet in the strip. We automatically hide the first one, but for now you need to hide the other. Let's look at what we have in the upper. And you can see we're using Danley type 2 pins and bushings, we switch to that recently. Show the whole tool. And we also have a tool for looking at spring force computation. And again, you can see where the center is, and there's the information on it. So that's a quick overview of some of the standard components. Thanks.